Hey students, in this video, I'll be touching on the topic of reproduction in plants. Today, we'll look at four main guiding questions, namely, why are plants important to us? How do plants reproduce? How do flowering plants reproduce? And finally, how do non-flowering plants reproduce? Without further ado, let's get started. You may sometimes wonder, why are plants important to us? How about we imagine a world without plants? If plants do not reproduce, eventually all of the plants will die out. If no plants exist, animals cannot get the food they need to survive. Additionally, our world will be filled with so much carbon dioxide that we cannot breathe in oxygen and respire. This also means that our globe will become extremely hot. Over here, we shall recap on photosynthesis, where plants make food by taking in carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. Lastly, we cannot eat the vegetables that our body needs. Then, if plants need to reproduce, how exactly do they do that? First of all, plants reproduce through seeds for flowering plants, spores for non-flowering plants, and with the help of other parts of the plant, for example, flowers are involved in sexual reproduction of plants. This means that they are called reproductive structures. On a side note, flowering plants are plants that can develop flowers. Non-flowering plants, yes, you guessed it, they do not develop flowers. So then, how do flowering plants reproduce? Before we answer this question, let's find out. How exactly does a flower look like for it to be able to go through processes like pollination? Well, the flower has eight main parts. The anther and filament, which belong to the male parts called the stamens. The stigma, style, ovary and ovule, which belong to the female parts called the carpel. And finally, the petal and flower stalk. So, what do each of the eight parts of the flowers do? Well, the petal being bright and large attracts pollinators like birds and bees to the flowers for pollination to happen. The stigma receives pollen grains and the style connects the stigma to the ovary. The ovule becomes the seed after fertilization happens. The ovary protects the ovule and becomes the fruit after fertilization. Moving on to the male parts, the filament holds the anther up an anther produces pollen grains, which contain the male reproductive cells and stores them in pollen grains, a uh, pollen sac, sorry. Finally, the flower stalk holds the stalk flower up so that pollinators can see it. Before we move on, here's a study tip. To differentiate stigma and style, remember that stigma sounds like stigma, which means it is sticky. It sticks to pollen grains and therefore is a top part of the style. To differentiate filament and anther, think of filament as feelers, like those you find on insects. They are long and therefore the long part that holds the anther up. All in all, there are four processes in the life cycle of a flowering plant. Firstly, the adult plant have flowers that are pollinated by insects or wind through pollination. Pollination occurs when pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of flowers on adult plants. Next, through fertilization, the female reproductive cells in ovules are fertilized by the male reproductive cells carried in pollen grains. Then, the flowers develop into fruits that contain seeds. These seeds are dispersed to places away from the parent plant. Finally, the seeds are then dispersed. That are dispersed will undergo germination with the right conditions and grow into a young plant. This life cycle repeats when the young plant that is new goes into the adult plant that starts to, to develop flowers. So as you can tell from the four steps of the reproductive cycle of a flowering plant, the flower is a very important part of the plant. As mentioned earlier, it may develop into a fruit which could produce seeds that could develop into a young plant 
through germination. Many types of plants have both female and male parts on the same flower. Some have male and female parts on different flowers, and some on different plants. The first step of the reproductive cycle is pollination. How then does pollination work? Pollination occurs when pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma. Plants go through two types of pollination, insect pollination and wind pollination. Let's take a look at this gif. Is pollination happening here? Yes, you guessed it. Pollination is not happening here. The bird is simply feeding on the nectar produced by the flowers. Pollination only happens in the two types, insect pollination and wind pollination. The bird is an animal. Let's take a look at insect pollination. Plants that go through insect pollination have flowers that are usually large, brightly coloured and scented to attract pollinators. This means that they smell nice. The anthers also do not hang out of the flower, and the flowers have sticky stigma that catch pollen grains in the air. What about wind pollination? Plants that go through wind pollination have flowers that are usually small, dull coloured and have no scent. The anthers hang out of flowers so that pollen grains can easily be shaken off and carried away by wind to pollinate another flower of the same kind, like in this picture. The stigma are large and feathery to catch pollen grains in the air too. So, what happens after pollination? Yes, fertilization. When pollen grains land onto the stigma, the male reproductive cells from the pollen grains travel down the cell and fuse with the female reproductive cells in the ovule, which is in the ovary. Fertilization is happening. After fertilization, the flower drops its petals and the ovary swells to become bigger. The flower, or more specifically, the ovary, is now the fruit. The ovules that have been fertilized become the seeds you normally find in fruits. Take note that one ovule forms one seed. If a flower has many ovules and are all fertilized, the fruit formed at the end of fertilization would have many seeds. Before we carry on, let's pause for a thought. Can you name me some fruits whose flowers only contain one ovule? Some of the fruits are avocados and mangoes. Avocados have a large seed, while mangoes have a large flat seed in the center. As they only have one seed each, this means that they only had one ovule in each of their own types of flowers. What about fruits whose flowers had many ovules? Some of the fruits include watermelon and papaya. Look at how plentiful the seeds in, are in these fruits. This means that the many ovules had been fertilized. Take note that the word ovules can only be used when the flower has not developed into a fruit, and thus it has not been fertilized. The word seed is only used when the ovule has been fertilized and the flower has developed into a fruit. When a plant goes through fertilization and seeds form, how are the seeds carried from one place to another? Plants disperse their seeds by wind, some by animals, some by explosive action, and some by the flow of water down rivers, for example. Please pause the video to read on about the different characteristics that the plants with different dispersal methods have. Before we move on, Here's a study tip. To remember these four ways of dispersal of seeds, remember, we always eat watermelon. Can you guess how this statement came about? Notice how the first alphabet is the same as those of the ways of the dispersal of seeds? Now, you may be wondering, what is the purpose of seed dispersal? Why does seed dispersal have to occur? Seed dispersal has to happen so that seeds can be brought away by wind or insects from the parent plant. This means that it reduces competition for resources like sunlight, water, nutrients and space for growth. This also means that the chances of the seed germinating and successfully growing into a young plant will be higher. 
Here are some examples of fruits or seeds that are dispersed with the help of wind, animals, explosive action, and water. Notice how the seeds dispersed by wind seem to be light and have wing-like structures. This helps them use wind to carry them away from their parent plants. Animals are attracted to sweet-smelling and brightly coloured fruit. They eat it and travel to other parts of their home. It is important to note that the seeds of the fruits that animals eat cannot be digested by the stomach. The seeds will be passed out of the body as fecal matter. This happens when the animal has already travelled to somewhere else away from the parent plant. Here, seed dispersal has occurred. For dispersal of seeds through explosive action, notice that the seeds are packed tightly together in seed pods. They have long fruit walls that are capable of opening forcefully and shooting seeds out in all directions away from the parent plant. Notice that the coconut has a waterproof, hairy or fibrous husk. This helps it to float on water to be able to be carried away from the parent plant. Before we continue, quick question. What's the difference between pollination and seed dispersal? First of all, let's recap. Pollination occurs when pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma. Pollen grains carry the male reproductive cells from one flower to another flower of the same kind. So, what about seeds? Yes, seeds are fertilized ovaries. They are formed only after both pollination and fertilization has occurred. Here's a flow of events of how seeds are formed. Seeds may not immediately germinate upon formation. They only start to germinate once conditions are favourable for them. This only happens when the seed is still alive, has sufficient air or oxygen, water and warmth. A seed does not require light to germinate. It can germinate even in the dark. When a root grows out of a seed, it means the seed has germinated. After a seed has germinated, it continues to grow into a young plant. When a seed germinates, the roots appear first for more water to be absorbed and to provide support for the plant to grow. The plant at this stage uses the food stored in the seed leaves for energy. Then, the shoot appears. When a young plant develops leaves, it can photosynthesize and produce its own food. Here's a tip! To remember the conditions for germination, that is, air, water, and warmth, remember the acronym WOW. Wow! W which stands for water, O which stands for oxygen or air, and the second W for warmth. What about non flowering plants? How do they reproduce if they don't have flowers? Non-flowering plants such as moses and ferns do not have flowers. Therefore, they reproduce from spores instead of seeds. These spores are found in things called spore banks. On a side note, do note that plants can reproduce without fertilization. This is called asexual reproduction. Spores are tiny and are dispersed by wind because they are so light, just like seeds. They germinate and grow into plants when conditions are favourable. And with that, let's recap the four guiding questions. Can you answer all of them? Firstly, plants are important and have to reproduce because many living things like us depend on them for survival. Secondly, plants reproduce through seeds or spores. Next, flowering plants reproduce through the dispersal of seeds which are found in fruits. These seeds can be dispersed by wind, water, animals, and explosive action. Non-flowering plants reproduce by spores, not seeds. Time for a short quiz. Pause the video to attempt the following question on your own. When you are done, continue with the video. For the MCQ question, the answer is 2. Since a fruit was produced by plant A and fruits come from flowers which have undergone fertilization, 
plant A is therefore a flowering plant. For options 1, 3 and 4, we cannot tell whether it is correct just based on a picture. For the structured question, this is the answer. Fruit R disperses its seeds by wind. The seeds are light with transparent wings, as written in the table, thus they are able to be carried by wind easily. And that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Before we end off, we would like to thank Gabriel for his tremendous guidance in the production of this video, as well as Ko Yang and Well and Care Centre for providing us with this opportunity to help you. See you in our next video. Have fun learning! This video is brought to you by Project Love of Learning from Hua Chong Institution.